Hi, this is Vicki Robinson. Today I wanted to share with you a page made by one of my creative team members. Her name is Gina. And Gina's not only a fabulous page designer, she also just really excels at choosing the right photograph to go along with the page she's going to do. She just has a knack for it. I'm constantly marveling at her ability to find just the best photograph. It's obvious here she wanted to do a light and airy kind of page. This is using Miss Ella. And she found this perfect photo. Look at this. It's so cool. She's not only found the perfect photo, but she's done a very cool technique I'm going to show you in just a second for making it appear as if these ladies are stepping right over this frame. It's just fabulous. So before I show you the out of bounds technique that Gina used on her page, let's take a quick look at how it developed. She started with the watercolor paper. Um, and then, you know, I'm thinking if she did, did her pages like I would do mine, if I have a photo, I probably would have placed the photo first and then decided for composition purposes what needs to go where. She added these watercolor paint strokes and I actually think she did something brilliant here. She duplicated one of them, rotated it, and then moved it up off the page so it's actually going off the page up here. That to me is just brilliant because it added to the uh, feel of watercolor. It sort of feels like water moving and it really goes perfectly with this beachy photo. Just a very clever technique and a very subtle effect. I'm sure she went through the elements and then decided what things she wanted to put around or behind the frame in order to draw attention to it. She added the cute little heart and then she added the butterfly, which by the way was much larger in the kit, but she's using it to help anchor the photo. Um, at, so she made it smaller and then she's using the stitches in the same way. Now, she probably didn't need to do very much. Oh, she added her title here too as well. She probably didn't need to do very much else to the page, but because she sort of used this rule of thirds and didn't exactly place her set, her photograph in the center of the page, she sort of left with an open area here on the left side of the page. And so she filled that with some of those stacked ephemera, uh, some of that punchinella stencil, that little star you can see that it's a really nice finishing touch to this page. It feels complete now. I really love how this page developed. It perfectly fit the photo that she was trying to use. And then of course she used this wonderful out of bounds technique. Let's see how she accomplished that. I have moved her photo and the frame over to a new document. I've put a solid color background here and I've recolored the frame to blue to make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. Now the first thing we need to do is to get rid of everything that's on the outside of the frame. Going back to her page for a moment, you see that the picture itself is contained within the bounds of the frame. So I'm going to need to do that first. Before I attempt that though, I'm going to make a backup copy of my photo. And I also know in this case, I need a second copy and you'll see why in just a moment. So the first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate my photo layer. A Couple of ways to do that. I can drag that layer down to the new layer icon or I can come up to layer, new, layer via copy. If you uh, prefer to use keyboard shortcuts uh, when you can, as I do, you can see that the keyboard shortcut here to uh, make a layer from copy is Command J on a Mac, Control J on a PC. So that's what I'm gonna do, Command J, duplicate my layer. Now the top layer I'm going to use in a little while, the bottom layer is just my self uh, safe keeping layer, so I'm going to uh, just make the middle layer visible. So in order to get rid of everything that is outside the boundaries of the frame, I'm going to choose my rectangular marquee tool, that's M on the keyboard, and I am going to click and drag from the upper left hand corner of the frame all the way down to the bottom right. If you need to reposition after you've started your selection and before you've lifted your mouse, you can always hold down the space bar and that lets you move it to where you need it to be. And I'm up down too low at the bottom, more on the right. And then 
that looks about right. I want to make sure that I'm just barely on the outside of the frame. That looks okay to me. So now my selection appears to be selecting everything inside of the frame. What I need to do is get rid of everything outside of the frame. To accomplish that, I'm going to invert my selection, and you do that by coming to the uh, Select Inverse menu item. That's a Shift Command I or Control I on a PC. Now everything outside my selection is selected, and I'm going to press the Delete key. Command or Control D to deselect. Now, of course, I've decapitated these ladies, but that's why I made this extra copy, so we'll come back to that in a little while. The next thing we're going to do is set about the task of making it appear as if these ladies are stepping over the frame. To do that, we're going to add a layer mask. You click on the layer that you want to add the mask to and click on the layer mask icon. It's a square with a circle inside of it. And it's going to fill the mask with white. That's the default for layer masks. I know layer masks can be a little confusing to people, but if you think of them sort of like stencils, if you were to lay a stencil down and spray ink through it, every place that had an opening, there would be ink, and every place that was solid on the, on the stencil would protect the surface from the ink. It would mask it out. And that's kind of how these layer masks work. You, you use layer masks to hide and reveal portions of an image without destroying the image so that if you needed to, you could fill this layer mask with white again and start all over again or reverse your uh, brush strokes by switching back and forth from black to white. What you should notice when you have a layer mask selected and when the layer mask is selected, there'll be this little uh, white frame at the top and bottom. What you'll notice is that your paint chips automatically set to black and white. That's the default colors. If yours for some reason don't, and you're sure you're selected on the mask, just press the um, D key and that will set the colors to the defaults of black and white. To use a layer mask, you paint on it in black or white. You can see that the mask is white. That means what I'm seeing right now, if I were to paint on white, right using white right now there'd be no no difference in my mask. But if I were to paint on black in black, that would hide whatever it is I'm painting over. And let me show that for to you. I'm going to um, going to zoom in here. Let's see if I can get away with two times here. I'm going to choose B for my brush tool and choose a hard round brush. See, this one's really kind of big. I'm going to use my left or right bracket keys while I'm painting to reduce or increase the size, making sure that my Layer mask is what's selected over here in the layer panel, and that black is the foreground color chip. I'm going to paint away those areas of this frame that I don't want to show. So right here, oops, I went too far. That's the beauty of a layer mask right there. All I need to do is switch my color chips to white. That was the X key on the keyboard. Maybe make my brush a little smaller. And paint back in what I accidentally erased just a tiny little bit. Switch my color chips back and then I'm going to go ahead and paint away this portion of the frame. So I think you can see where I'm going with this. If I back out here real quick, you can see it already looks as if her leg is straddling that frame. Now we need to do the other side here. So again, making sure that my layer mask is active and my paint chip is black. I'm going to paint away this portion of the frame on her dress all the way over here. Now I probably would be a little bit more careful if I was doing this for real. I really just want to show you the technique. And if you recall in Gina's layout, uh, her sleeve was coming over the uh, frame as well. So we're going to do that here and here. And you see I got a little bit soppy here, so I'm just going to reverse my color chip make my brush a little bit smaller, paint back in what I didn't want to go. Now I need to do her fingers, so I need to change my color chip back to black, and then paint over the fingers here, and the hand. 
and be as detailed with this as you want when you do want to do it yourself but you can see the idea very quickly and very easily we've created that a magic effect of these ladies stepping over this frame but now we have to deal with the fact that I've cut off their heads now you might ask why didn't I just leave their heads in the photo and use the same masking technique to remove the frame around their head and shoulders. We'll take a look at Gina's. If you see here, let's zoom in a little bit, if you see here she's got a drop shadow on the frame and the shadow is falling here but you don't see any shadow on their head and shoulders and that's because their bodies are appearing to be on the outside of the frame. If I were to go back to my page now and add my drop shadow, which I'll do so you can see, the drop shadow is is showing is casting right onto their shoulders. If I were to merely use my, let's target my uh, layer mask again and put my brush tool on and my black chips. If I'm going to erase, if I erase or mask out, look what happens. I su successfully masked out, masked out the frame, but the shadow remains. So that's not going to work. I have to come up with another way to handle that. And here's how we do that. That's why I have that second copy. Let's turn off the shadow. And we're going to, on the top copy of the photo this time, get out the rectangular marquee tool again, which is M on the keyboard. And now I'm going to select from just above her hat here and just below where that shadow, matter of fact, just to make it easier, let's leave that shadow on. Let us select here, just above her hat. And I want to make sure that I am just getting enough of this to make sure that shadow is accounted for. So I'm selecting the top half. I think that looks okay. And again, I don't want to delete what's inside the selected area. I want to delete what's outside. So I'm going to come up to the menu, choose Select Inverse, and press the Delete key. Command D or Control D to deselect. So that's the first step of the process. The next step of the process is I have to get rid of this white around their heads. You can take a look at Gina's and see that you see the watercolor paper. You don't see the white of the photo. So I'm going to do that by selecting my magic wand tool. Let's turn off the drop shadow here. I'm going to select the uh, magic wand tool and I'm going to select the white area here on this layer and it did a pretty good job. It looks like it's got just about everything. Probably didn't do a great job around those earrings but we'll deal with that in a moment. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the option key on a Mac or the alt key on a PC and press the layer mask button icon and what that does is it creates a layer mask filling in with black the areas that I had selected. So that was a really quick and easy way to create a layer mask from a selection. Now let's take a look. I'm going to uh, make sure I'm Command D to deselect. Uh, let's take a closer look at that. I can see here that we have missed this area here on her hair and the earrings um, have sort of been eaten into a little bit. So because we're working with a layer mask though, we can put those back. So I'm going to choose my brush again. And this time I want to reveal things that have been hidden by the mask. So I'm going to press the X key to switch my layer, my color chips, and then I'm going to reduce my brush teeny tiny. And then I'm going to very carefully making sure once again that my layer mask is what's active. I'm going to paint those earrings back in. Now there's on a white background, so I'm going to get a little bit of that white. Since we're going to be putting this on that watercolor paper, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to put that back in. Do my best to put this earring is, um, and we see or looking at this at an angle. So kind of a little odd little thing here, but I'm just going to carefully paint back a little bit of this. If I wanted to be uber detailed, I could switch my uh, color chips back to black, make my brush really tiny. 
uh, and get rid of some of this. But as I said, we know that it was on that watercolor paper, so that really won't matter so much. I'm going to switch back to black here and paint in, I'm sorry, switching back to white. I'm going to paint in a little bit of where it got rid of her hair there, just so that's just not so pixelated. So there we have it. I'm going to zoom out here so you can see. I'm going to put my drop shadow on, and you're going to say, but Vicki, you did all that work, and the drop shadow's still in the wrong place. Well, yep, it is, but that's easy because due to the magic of Photoshop, I'm going to take this layer and drop it up above my frame. Voila! <laughs> Let me zoom out here for you. And let's take, let's turn the color, uh, take the color off that frame and add the watercolor paper back in. There you have it. I hope you'd enjoyed this technique on how to do an out of bounds as Gina did in her lovely layout using the Miss Ella kit. Thanks for watching.